All right. Um, so I, I did some analysis of the grades, and uh, we had 22 students take the test. The class average was an 80 or an 80.1 or something like that. And the standard deviation, I don't know if you remember me telling you about the standard deviation, but uh, it, was, it was a low number, it was good, it was around 14, which meant that most students were around the same grade. Um, I believe we had, I know I can remember this backwards, um, I think we had two Fs, two Ds, I think we had eight A's, eight B's, so that's 16, 18, 20, I think two C's or something like that. So it was, it was good. I was actually, I don't want to say I was surprised, okay? But I did kind of challenge you a little bit on those rational functions. Um, I hadn't, hadn't really given you anything quite like that. And what I was most concerned about was those, that uh, x squared minus 25 on number four, because I had so many students that are still, um, when they're setting things like that equal to zero, instead of factoring, which you can factor this and do x plus five, x minus five, I'm still getting a lot of students who are doing you know, this, which is right, okay, this is okay, and then doing square root on both sides and forgetting plus and minus. And that's still happening a lot in here. So I was afraid that people were gonna mess that up but not as many did as, as I thought, so that was good to see. Um, let me get my phone on quiet here. What else? Anything else? Each, each problem was worth 10 points, so there were 60 points possible. And so that's it, just so you know. Second, bottom of the second page should, well, if you're counting the back, yeah, bottom of the second page right there, that should be the grade that I put in Canvas today. So Canvas should be pretty up to date. Now, what I will do, I will provide you with a uh, strip of paper on Wednesday. Wednesday? Tomorrow. So tomorrow's our last lecture, right? So um, I will provide you with a, a strip of paper tomorrow and, or something. I don't know. I can't guarantee you a strip of paper. But it's going to be something that will tell you what you need on the final in order to get an A in the class, to get a B in the class, or to get a C in the class. So... I'll give you that tomorrow. All right? Any other issues? We need to try and get a quiz in this week, maybe two, so we can have some grades. You like the name tag quiz? We'll do a name tag, we'll do a, a name thing tomorrow. Okay, but I, I'm not gonna feel bad. If someone doesn't have it, I'm not gonna feel sorry for you, all right? And I won't remind you, take them out. I'm just going to say, all right, here we go. Whoever has them out, has them out. All right? Okay. Today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of jump a little ahead. And it's just my own prerogative. I just like this topic. Students do well with this topic. I think it'll be good to have it on the final because it'll you know, boost your grade a little bit. All right? Instead of dealing with logarithms, which can kind of be messy, I, th I thought we'd get into uh, systems of linear equations today. And then tomorrow, I'll talk about logarithms. But it'll just be more of kind of an afterthought sort of thing. All right? So today, we're doing systems of linear equations. And the reason why students seem to do well with this is because you've already, we've already looked at this before. We're just going to add a, an additional layer onto this. 
So when we look at linear equations, um, when we looked at them in the past, they looked like this. y equals mx plus b. And we knew that when we graphed this, obviously it was a line, right? And there were, there were actually two ways that we talked about graphing these. One of them was to find the x-intercept, then the y-intercept, then draw a line. The other way was to use this number to find your y-intercept and then use the m to find your, you know, up and down, left and right. So there's kind of two ways that we know how to graph a line. Um, some other things I, I should mention is that when you're given a, a linear equation, it does not have to be given to you like this. So it could look like this to start. Right? That would still be a line and you could be asked to graph that, right? So that it could have both of your variables over here and it can have a number over here. Then you could move the x over and solve for y and you can make it look like this, right? So the additional uh, layer of stuff that we have on top today is this whole idea of a system or systems of, of linear equations. So what we're going to do is we're going to take not just one line, but we're going to take two lines and we're going to look at some of the kind of uh, geometric uh, results that we get when we draw two lines on a sheet of paper. All right, so let me start with this. I'm going to give you two lines. Uh, let's graph these lines. So here's the first one y equals uh, 3x uh, plus 1 and I'll just put over here L1 like this in a, a colon so that you can see okay line 1 is going to be this one line 2 I'll do it a little different how about we just use that one over there 2x minus 4y equals 10 All right those are those are two lines aren't they Let's graph both of these and let's graph them together on the same uh, axes, same, same sheet of paper. So this is called a system of linear equations and we're going to write it in a different uh, notation when we get to the next example, but just to start this way I'm going to write it. So how about for L1? If you were being asked to graph this, how would you go about graphing that? You have a y-intercept at 1, so that means I'm going to do what? Okay, yes. Where do, you, where, where do I put a point? Y-axis up 1, yeah, right? So because this is a number 1, I will go to the y-axis, I'll go up 1, and I will put a dot there, right? And then someone else, what do we do from there? Use what? The slope. What is the slope here? 3, which we write as a fraction always, 3 over 1, that's our slope, and that represents m, remember, right, m, rise over run. So how am I going to use that? Up 3 over 1 from where? From that point we just put, right? So I'm going to go up 3, 1, 2, 3, uh, sorry, that's not 3, what is it? That's 4, because I was at 1, 1, 2, 3, and then over 1 there right and then I can draw my straight line there's my stick y'all see it around here oh there it is <clears throat> all right so while while uh, I'm getting this how about L2 how about line 2 how are we going to draw L2 how would you like to draw L2 anyone have a preference there Anyone? You want to do, you want to solve for y and you want to do the same thing you did here? I could do that, right? I could solve for y. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but I, I think it's useful for us to show both methods here just so you can see them both again. So what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to find the x-intercept first. And how do I find the x-intercept? Set y equal to zero into the equation. Remember, we do, we've done this, right? So if I replace y with 0, this equation becomes 2x equals 10. 
and then that gives me x is 5 when I divide both sides by 2. Right? So this gives me a point of 5, 0. X coordinate is 5, the Y coordinate was 0. So if I come out here on the X axis, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I put a dot right there, that's going to live on my second line. And then I'm going to find the Y intercept. And to find the Y intercept, what did we do? X equal to 0. Rewrite the equation. So remember when X is 0, this term is gone. And you're left with the negative 4y equals 10. Divide both sides by negative 4, right? Be careful with that. Divide this side by negative 4. Divide this side by negative 4. You get y equals, what is that? What is it? Negative 5 halves, yes. And it's negative. And as a decimal, that's what, like 2.5? Negative 2.5? Negative 2.5. point five, And so if I write this as a point, I'm going to put it up here. The x coordinate is 0. The y coordinate is negative 2.5. And I come over here and I graph it. So 1, 2, 3. Here's negative 3. So negative 2.5 is going to be about right there. Right? And then I draw a line through these two points. Any questions? No questions? Now, what we are interested in today is what we call solving, solving a system of linear equations. That's, what we're, that's the ultimate goal for today, is solving a system of linear equations. All I've done so far is I've asked you to graph these two lines, right? If I ask you to solve this system of linear equations, what do you think it is that I'm actually looking for? Where they intersect. Where they intersect, exactly. I'm looking for where these two lines hit. So remember that every point that lives on this line will satisfy this first equation. In other words, this point right here is the point 0, 1, right? If I plug in 0 for x and 1 for y, this will be true, won't it? 0 for x here, 1 for y here, and that would be a true statement. Do you all see that that would be true? How about this point right here? What's this point? What was it 1, 4? If I plug in 1 for x right here and 4 for y, won't that be a true statement? It would be 3 times 1 plus 1 is 4, and the left and right sides would be the same. So these two points satisfy that first equation. Does this point right here satisfy the second equation? No, you can tell just because that point doesn't li live on this line. And it goes the other way also. This point right here satisfies the second equation, but it does not satisfy the first equation. What we're looking for is a point that it's not really on my picture here. We're looking for this point right here. That point right there satisfies both at the same time. It's an x and a y that you could plug into this one or this one and make both uh, equations equal at the same time. Understand? Now, it's hard, to, it's hard to tell what that point is just by looking, right? Because, you know, I'm using this ruler. It's not, not very precise. So there's got to be a more systematic way of actually getting the answer. And that's what we're going to do. We're going we're to learn a process of solving a system of linear equations. All right? Would we all agree, though, that from our picture, whatever this point is, it looks like the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate are both negative, right? So when I go through this process and we get an answer, we should get both an, a negative x and a negative y. If we get something different, then something's wrong, right? OK, so here we go. We're going to learn the method. There are actually two methods. I'm going to show you both, 
All right. I'm not quite sure on the final if I'm going to ask you to demonstrate both. I might just let you choose, but I want you to be able to do both. All right, so there's two methods. First one, method one. This is called um, substitution. So what we are doing is we are solving a system of linear equations using a method called substitution. And this method is difficult to write down. You know how I like to do a lot of steps, like for graphing things? I like to give you steps. It's difficult to write the steps out and then do an example. It's easier for me to kind of do an example and then write the steps as I go. All right? So that's the way I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do this kind of by, by example. Let's take that same problem I just had. Um, the instructions are now to solve this system. And the problems were y equals 3x plus 1. And it was uh, 2x minus 4y equals 10. Those are my two lines, right? I want to solve the, this system of equations, get the solution that works for both of these. The mathematical notation we use to let people know we have a system of equations is to put a big brace in front of the two equations. And that lets you know you have a system. You're trying to find an answer for both at the same time. So that's the, exactly the way it will appear on the test, just like that. All right, so first step, okay? I'm gonna write the steps down over here. First step, pick any equation and isolate any variable. Okay, that's going to be my first step. So what that means is that I have the freedom of choice here. It's a good thing, right? I get to choose which equation I want to work with and I get to solve either one for either x or y. So I look at these and I say, well first, are, are any of these already solved for x or y? Well the first one is already solved for y, so that should be my natural choice for step one, right? Pick the first equation, solve it for y. Done. Got it? So my first step over here is I'm going to choose equation one. Can I call it equation one? This is equation one, this is equation two. I'm going to solve for my choice, y, I wouldn't want to solve for x because x, I'd have to do some work, right? So when I do this, I write it down. There, done. Okay, so I didn't have to do anything. Now the second step is hard to write down in words, so let me see if I can do it. Substitute your answer for part one, or, yeah, part one, okay, so whatever we got here, substitute that answer into the other equation. All right, so I'm going to take this answer over here and I'm going to plug it in to the other equation, the equation I didn't mess with, right? This is the equation I didn't mess with. I'm going to take this and everywhere I see a y, I'm going to replace it with 3x plus 1. Understand that? So that's my second step. I'm going to write down, I'm going to do a lot of detail here, 2x minus 4, and I'm going to highlight what I'm replacing, y equals 10, right? But I'm going to replace this y with that right there. So let me try and squeeze this in right here. So I'm still in the second step. I'm going to rewrite that second equation, 2x minus 4, and then my, my y becomes 3x plus 1, right? Now this 4 is multiplying times the y, so when I put 3x plus 1 here, I must put it in parentheses. Everyone see that? 
That's your y. And then equals what? 10. Don't forget, you still have an equation here. And what we've done is we've turned an equation that had two variables in it, right? x and y. We have transformed it into an equation that has how many variables? One, right? Just x. And if you have an equation with just x in it, you should be able to solve it. And notice that this equation is not quadratic, right? This is a linear equation. And so we know how to solve linear equations. We just isolate the variable. So if I'm going to isolate the x here, the first thing I need to do is multiply that negative 4 through to free the x from the parentheses. So I'll have 2x minus 12x minus 4 equals 10. That makes sense? Lena, how are you doing today? Yeah, just kind of there. C can you help me put this together? What, how many x's am I going to have on the left side, Lena? Okay, so that'll give me negative 10 x's minus 4 equals 10. All right, now what? You want to keep talking? Yeah? Add 4 to both sides, so negative 10x, it goes away over here, becomes uh, 14. Good. And then you can divide that by negative 10. Good. Divide both sides by negative 10. And x will be equal to, let's just reduce the fraction for now. So like they, they both are divisible by 2, so negative 7 over 5. Is that okay with you? Negative 7 fits. We could get that as a decimal if we wanted to, but we'll just leave it like that. So do you remember when I had the picture up here and had the two lines and I said that whatever our answer is, our x and our y coordinates should both be negative, right? We have that here. We have an x coordinate that's, that's negative, so that's a promising sign. But now I still need to um, go and figure out what y is, right? So let, let's go back through these steps for a second. I said substitute your answer into, into part one, from part one into the other equation. We did that. I'm going to add one little thing. Um, solve for the variable so that's what we did right here, didn't we? We substituted it and then we solve for the variable. Our third step is to substitute our answer for uh, from part three into the equation from part one. Uh, part, I'm sorry, part two. I'm doing part three. Thank you. So if you go back and you look at the context of this problem here, we have solved for what? We have x, right? What do we not have? Y. But if you go back to our first step, look at this first step. Didn't we have an equation that had y solved for? And all I need to know, all I need in order to determine what y is, is what x is. But I know what x is. And so we are going to substitute this in. So this will be my third and final step. And I'll put it right here. My third step is to take this equation from part one and replace that x with negative seven fifths plus one. And now we need to actually figure out what that is. So order of operations, we do this multiplication before the addition. That's a fraction, 3 over 1 times uh, negative 7 over 5. So you multiply fractions straight across, right? Negative 21 over 5 plus 1. And then to add those two fractions, you have to have the same denominator, right? So you rewrite this 1 as 5 over 5, right? Same denominator. 
So y equals negative 21 over 5 plus 5 over 5. And we're almost there. y equals, uh, careful, 16, negative 16 over 5. So we substitute the answer from part 2 into part 1 and solve, right? And that's it. We're done. We're done. Now I'm going to write down my answer. I'm going to write it down as an ordered pair. So this is going to be a point, right? The point is negative 7 fifths. That was my x coordinate. My y coordinate is negative 16 fifths. And let's convert those to decimals, just so we have some idea. This is, uh, what, negative 1.4, and then this one is negative 3.2. So if we were to go back to those two lines that we had, and we were to see where they hit each other, that's exactly where they would hit each other on the graph. We good? All right. Now, substitution is a, is a nice method. I mean, it's, it's pretty quick. Do you see why they call it substitution? You're doing multiple substitutions in here to, to make it happen. Um, but although substitution is powerful, it's limited. And what I mean by that is if you were to be doing math further on, which most of you are not, then what if I give you, instead of two equations with two variables like, like I just gave you. I give you three equations with three variables. Then that becomes more complicated. Or four, four equations with four variables, or five with five. Understand? If I were to do that, you could not use substitution. So, so you would have to do something else. And so we have a second method called elimination, which is a little little bit uglier, but way more powerful than this is, all right? So I like to at least show you the elimination. And so what, what I'll do is I'm going to do the exact same problem using the other methods so you can see them, you know, kind of side by side. You ready? You all look so thrilled. I was thinking about talking with the chair of the department um, and maybe getting one extra week of class. Are y'all, would y'all sign up for that? Yeah, just, no? Okay. You sure you don't want to come back next week and do this? <laughs> All right, method two. Elimination. So let's do the same system of equations. Uh, I should put y equals 3x plus 1. And other one, 2x minus 4y equals 10. <clears throat> now, the steps for this one are going to be even more difficult for me to write down. All right? So here's, here's the steps not the steps in words, but here's what you're allowed to do, all right? Do you all agree that if I have an equation, I can always multiply both sides of the equation by any number I want? It's like a balance. If you have a, an equation, I can add anything to both sides, so I could add 10 to both sides, I could take away 5 from both sides, it would still be the same equation. I could multiply both sides by 2, I could divide both sides by 5, it's all the same equation. You're always allowed to do that, right? So most people are comfortable with that. But there's something else you can do with two equations when you're trying to solve the system that isn't as natural. And that's this. You can, you can take these two equations and you can add them together and get a third equation out. That third equation can replace either of the two. Okay, so you start with two, you add them together, you get a third. You can come back and take that third and replace either of these with that third one. And you're still gonna get the same solution. Now that's much more difficult for someone to explain. And did I show you the problem? I think I did. 
the 1 plus 2 plus 3 problem where the Adam, did I show you all that? That there was a formula for it that the little kid came up with? No? Hmm. Maybe I didn't show you this formula. I remember something like that, but I don't remember. Okay, well, either way. The oh, no, no, yeah, that's what I showed you. I'm sorry. Do you all want to hear this story or no? Not sure? Okay, so I'll tell you this story. You're going to have to put a little break on that. All right, sorry. All right, so th this is a true story. Well, we don't know if it's true, but it's told, it's told all the time. All right, it's a story about this mathematician. His last name is Gauss. Okay, I think his first name is Frederick. Anyway, he lived in the late 1800s. And back in those days, um, I think this story happens around first grade. Okay, he was in first grade. A little bit of background on him. His dad was an accountant, and he used to sit like on his dad's lap while his dad was doing his accounting, and, you know, writing all the numbers and adding all the numbers up in the columns and, you know, old school stuff. And uh, they didn't have Excel back then, right? So they did it all by hand. So uh, he sit on his dad's lap, and he could add up the columns of numbers in his head, like before his dad could do it by hand. And so they like, kind of knew he was pretty smart. But when he got to about first grade, um, the story goes that he went in and one day the teacher gave the class a problem. And the, the problem was this, okay class, one plus two plus three, what's that? And, you know, and so the little first graders were like, oh, one plus two plus three, and they figure out, okay, it's what, six, all right? And so the teacher says, all right, great, great. I want you now to do one plus two plus three, and I want you to do that all the way out till you get to 100. Get to work. So the kids were sitting there, and this is, this is back, you know, late 1800s. So they used to write, not on paper, they used to have like little miniature chalkboards, like little slate chalkboards, and that's what they would write on in class. And when they, when they were done with the problem in class, they would, they would turn their slate over, they would sit with their arms crossed, and they'd shut up, you know, because they had discipline and stuff back then, too. So, like, they just sit there. So the story goes that within a few minutes, Gauss turns his little slate over, and the teacher had kind of given the class this problem because he didn't want to deal with the kids that day. He just wanted to kind of give them busy work and just sit at his desk and, you know, surf the web. No, I don't know what he was doing at his desk. But, all right, so that's the story. So Gauss finishes this up within a few minutes and like the teacher's pissed off and irritated, walks over to Gauss and turns over Gauss's slate and Gauss has this written down. N times N plus one divided by two. And the teacher's like, what is this? And Gauss said, well, this is a formula that will, that will work where n is the last number you want me to add up to. So if you want me to add up the first 100 numbers, if I just put 100 right here, what's 100 plus 1? 101. Somebody get their calculator out. <laughs> Divide that by 2. Then that'll be the answer to this. So someone's going to do that on the calculator for me in a second. But let's see if it works with this one. Let's see, what would n be here? 3. three. Okay, let's see if that formula works for 3. If I put 3 here times, what's 3 plus 1? 4 over 2. 3 times 4 is 12 over 2, which is 6. So it works, it works for, for the first one, right? And you can check it yourself, but I don't recommend you do it. Um, that, it, that it always works. So what is this? Someone got that for me? What is it? 50-50. 50-50. So that's the sum of the first 100 numbers. If you do 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way out to 100, it's 5,050. Well, the teacher was, was very irritated because this formula was not new. Okay, Gauss did not, he was not the first one to come up with that formula. All right, the formula was already known. So, but the teacher was like, you know, who showed you that? Who showed you that formula? And Gauss insisted that nobody showed it to him, that he came up with it on his own. And so the teacher was all upset and didn't believe him. And so the story goes that Gauss proceeded to explain to his teacher how he came up with it. And I'd like to show you how he did it. All right? So see if you can follow this. All right? See if you can. This is a first grader explaining this to an adult. Okay, so here's Gauss's logic. And I think I'll go a little bit slow. Okay, so here's what Gauss said. You're asking me to add up some numbers, right? 1 plus 2 plus 3, all the way out 
until I get to 100. Well, there's a couple of numbers before that one that I have to add up, right, like this. And there's a bunch of junk in the middle, yeah? Well, let's call this, I'm going to call it, I'll call it x, all right? I don't know what he called it. But that's what I want, right? I want to know what x is. Yeah? Do you agree that when you add numbers, it doesn't matter what order you put them in, right? 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 5. That, that doesn't matter. Subtraction, it does matter, right? 3 minus 2 is not the same as 2 minus 3. But with addition, it doesn't matter. So Gauss said, all right, I'm going to write these numbers down again, but I'm going to write them backwards. 100 plus 99 plus 98 plus dot, 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 until I get down to the last three. The last one should be a what? A one. The one before it should be two, and the one before that should be three. Got it? So far, nothing amazing? That's, that's okay? Then Gauss said this. I'm going to add these two rows together. I'm going to add these two sides of the equation. If I add this to this, it should be x plus x. That should give me two of those, right? Two x's? So the left side of this equation is 2x. Now, let's look at this right side. What's 1 plus 100? 1 plus 100. 101. What's 2 plus 99? 101 again. What's 3 plus 98? 101 again. Plus, and that's going to continue to happen. All the way, right? The whole way. All the way down. Now, how many 101s are there? Well, I'll have one of them, I'll have two of them, I'll have three of them, I'll have how many total? 100 of them, won't I? So when we write something like 5 plus 5 plus 5, I could write that as 3 times 5, right? Or 5 times 3. That's what multiplication means. Multiplication means repeated addition. So another way of writing 101 added up 100 times would be to write 100 times 101, right? So I could write it this way. 2x is 100 times 101. Yeah? But that's twice what I want. So I'll divide both sides by 2. Right? That makes sense? Okay, now, I told you I was going to take this slow. That's actually not the way Gauss did it. But th do you get the idea of what's going to happen? Here's the way Gauss did it. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to erase this. Because Gauss's formula had an N in it, didn't it? So watch what Gauss did. Gauss said, my formula, I'm going to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way until I get out to N. Right? N. That could be 100, it could be 6, it could be whatever, right? What's the number that's going to be right in front of it? Well, it's whatever this is, take 1 away, right? So this will be n minus 1. What's the number right in front of that one? n minus 2. Got it? Now rewrite it backwards. What's the first one here? n, what's the one right next to it? n minus 1, what's the one next to that? and minus 2, and it goes all the way down, 3, 2, 1. Yes? Now, when you add these two rows together, this gets 2x, right? What's n plus 1? n plus 1, right? What's n minus 1 plus 2? What's n minus 1 plus 2? n plus 1 again. What's n minus 2 plus 3? n plus 1 again. Do you all see this? And this will continue to happen. All the way until I get to the last one. It'll still be n plus 1, won't it? Now here, here's the tricky part. How many n plus 1's are there? n of them, right? Not 100 of them, n of them. There's n of them? So this becomes n n plus 1's. And that's twice what I want, so if I divide by 2, I get n times n plus 1 over 2, which is the formula. That's the formula. So, what are your thoughts? If you follow that, 
How many of you follow that, honestly? I mean, yes? Okay. What makes this amazing and what separates geniuses from us, okay? I don't, I don't put myself in that category. I know a lot of mathematics, but I'm not, I'm not this, okay? This is a first grader. This is the thing that separates, you know, ordinary people from geniuses, to see this at first grade, in first grade. Now, you have to keep in mind that first grade back then was a lot different than first grade is now. I mean, the standards were a lot higher, things were different, all right? Um, but even then, that's, that's, that's a lot. Um, so the reason I'm telling you this story is because elimination, I was telling you you could add two rows together and you could replace any row with that third row. The reason you can do that, it's been proven that you can, it's okay, by Gauss, okay? This is actually called Gaussian elimination. It's named after him because he's the one who came up with a way of showing that it's okay to do it, all right? But you wouldn't be able to appreciate Gauss if I didn't show you this. So this is actually a pretty cool little formula you can use. If you ever, I call it the, uh, the birthday candle function, or I also call it like the birthday spankings function. Like if you wanna know, like if you blew out the appropriate number of candles on each of your birthdays for all your birthdays, like how many candles have you blown out in your life? My, uh, my wife's grandfather just turned 95 and we took him out to lunch. I was like, man, you've blown out a lot of candles. And he's like a math guy too. He's like an engineer. So I was like, you've blown out a lot of candles. And then we did the quick computation of how many. It was what, 95 times what? 90, add one to it, right? 96 over two, whatever that number is. That's how many candles he's blown out. Napkin at Longhorn Steakhouse type math. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just real quick. Just a real quick. We did it in our heads because we were driving. Oh, it, okay, so. <laughs> all right. Gaussian elimination. You ready for this? Sorry, I ate up like 10, 15 minutes there. I'm going to put the steps over here. All right. Here's, here are the steps. First thing. You look at both equations, all variables to the left, all numbers to the right, all right? Line up your x's and your y's. So variables, step one, variables to left side, number to the right side. Let's do that step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put an arrow. I'm going to rewrite this system of equations. I'm just going to rewrite it. The first equation, I'm going to move this 3x to the left side. And it, when I do that, it's going to become what? Negative 3x. And I'm going to put the negative 3x in front of the y, and I'll still have a positive 1 on the right-hand side. I'll add that little caveat to this just, just so we have it. Let's, uh, let's do x's before the y's. Do you know what I mean by that? When you move everything to the left-hand side, I could have written this y minus 3x, right? Instead, I'm going to write it negative 3x plus y. How about the second equation? Do I need to do anything to that one? No, nope, no changes necessary. Okay, so far so good? All right, now what we do, the second step, look at variables and try to cancel one of them. All right, so what the heck do I mean by that? Yeah. Close, not negative, because this one's already negative. But to make the top negative. You want it to be opposite, though. You want it to be opposite. Yes, because you want when you add them together for them to go away. If you make this one negative, when you add a negative and negative together, it's going to become negative 8. Oh, you want to make it positive. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, so let me, let me kind of illustrate to everyone what, what's happening here. We're looking at this right here, and we're looking at the variables, and we want these variables to cancel each other out if we add them together. So right now, if I take negative 3x and add 2x to it, what would I get? Negative 1x. Is it gone? No. If I take y, 1y, and I subtract 4y's, how many y's do I have? Negative 3y. What I want is when I add these down for one of the variables, your choice again, to go away. All right? So look at the variables and try and get them to cancel. But what you still have in your toolbox is you can always multiply any equation by any number, right? Both sides of the equation. So what looks like the most promising thing here is to try and get these two to cancel. And all I would have to do to make that happen is make that a 4y, right? If that was a positive 4y, then when I add straight down, it'll cancel out with the negative 4y. It'll become a 0. To make this a 4y, I have to multiply it by 4. But whatever I do to this, I have to do to both sides of the equation. So what I'm going to do is out here, I'm going to put a 4. I'm going to circle it. And that's just letting you know I'm about to multiply that entire first row by 4. And what I'll do is I'll put a little arrow, and I will rewrite the whole system. Look, with elimination, there's a lot of rewriting. You have to keep rewriting the system over and over and over, so get used to that. What would the first equation become if I multiply the entire thing by 4? Negative 12x. Then you've got your 4y, and then equals 1 times 4, 4. Got it? That's the same equation, we've just tweaked it. And then the second equation, we didn't do anything to it. Now when you look at this, you can see, hopefully, it's obvious to you, that if I add straight down, the x's are not going to go away, right? That's okay. I just need one of the variables to go away. The y's will go away. So I'm ready to move on to the next step which is to add the two rows, or two equations, together. I'm going to write that right here. What happens if I add these straight down? How many x's? Negative 10x. And then how many y's? 0 y. I'm going to put 0 y even though it's going to be gone, all right? And then equals what? 14. So you're adding everything, right? The x's, the y's, and the numbers on this side all become this. And that's the same as negative 10 x equals 14, right? And does that look familiar? We had that in the last problem. At some point, we, had, we got to that, didn't we? Now we divide both sides. Lena was the one who told us to divide both sides by negative 10. You get 14 over negative 10 which is the same as negative 7 fifths. We got the same result, didn't we? But we still need to get the what? The y. And this is different because in the last problem, we had an equation solved for y already, didn't we? And we just went and plugged it back in. How can we get what y is from this? Well, we actually do have it, don't we? Right here, we have an equation for y, but that won't always be the case. So at this step, you are free. You have complete freedom here to take this and plug it into any equation you see that has x and y in it. As long as x and y are both in it, you can pick any equation you want. Yes? You said it doesn't matter if you use a decimal point too, right? Uh, it doesn't matter. Just remember, as soon as you do decimal, you're going to get some error possibly some error in your answer, rounding error. Unless it's a fraction like this. This one's, uh, what, like negative 2.4? It stops, right? It doesn't keep going. All right, so pick an equation. doesn't matter. Anyone, anyone. I always like to go back to one of the original equations. And I'll do this one because it's a little more interesting. But if, if I were doing this problem, like myself, I would go right here. Because it's already solved for y. I just want you to see it go into that other one. So the last step, add two equations together um, and solve. Sorry, I forgot to put solve here. And then for pick equation and solve for the other variable.
So I'm picking that equation right there. I'm going to write it down, 2x minus 4y equals 10. I'm going to replace what with what? x with negative 7 fifths. So right here, 2, negative 7 fifths minus 4y equals 10. And then you go through and do the work. And you, you, I won't do any more of this, but you could go through and get the y. And you could see it'll come out the same. OK? All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you one. And I want you to do this problem using both methods. And let's make this an in-class group quiz. Easy money, right? We won't have a third variable. Um, that, gets, that gets a lot more complicated and takes me at least two days to go through something like that. Um, and the elimination becomes a lot, a lot harder. So, no. But I will ask you, since you're asking me, linear equation, uh, two equations, two variables like this, is where two lines intersect each other. Three equations, three variables is what? What is that geometrically? So it's actually the intersection of three sheets of paper. So each equation is a sheet of paper. And you're trying to figure out where three sheets of paper intersect. That's more complicated. All right, so here we go. I want you to solve this system of equations. Sorry, I'm changing that. Yes, that's right. Can everyone see that clearly? All right, so try both methods, see how it goes.